Hey there, campers. Uh, so today we are looking at finding limits analytically. So this is our third method in evaluating a limit. And this one is kind of a favorite. Graph, using a limit with a graph is probably number one, and this one's a close second. Uh, the table, not so much. <clears throat> uh, and the reason why people tend to like this is sometimes they can be really fast and it actually feels like you're doing something. Sometimes with a graph, it's like, wait, what are we just, what are we doing? Um, whereas here, it's it's more algebra. Okay. And for some of you, you've been waiting for this method to come out. Uh, all right, so evaluate each limit. So the limit is x approaches 4 of 3x plus 2. Well, that is just gonna equal 14. And there you go, you're done. Okay, part B. Uh, <laughs> wait, let's explain why that is the way it is. All right, so your goal for these types of limits, if you know the function is, if you can actually stick this value in for x, go ahead and stick it in and see what you get. So three times four plus two, hey, that's 14. And there you go. So that's why people like these a lot is because they're pretty fast. If you plug in the number, if you get a value as an answer, that's your, that's it, you're done. All right, part B, let's try it again. Plug in that negative two for X. And you get negative 11 as your result. Um, so for some of these, you can probably just do it right in your head and there's not a whole lot of work to actually show. Um, which again is why people kind of like them. Okay, if you plug in the zero for x, that knocks out these two terms and you're left with four. Part D, uh-oh, now you've got an ln and an absolute value, oh gosh. Well, I have no fear, a mathematician is here. So just subtract those. Absolute value of negative one is usually one. Uh, dang it. And the natural log of one is a big old zero. Okay, moving on to the trig functions. Plug in pi over two and for x. Cosine of pi over two, that's zero. Part f. Plug in the zero for x. So zero over or zero minus one over e to the zero. So you have negative one over one, which is negative one. All right, part G. Now this one's a little bit different. Like there's no x, and that tends to throw a calculus student sometimes because they're just like, oh my gosh, wait, there's no x. Well, like, what do I do? It's like, well, remember back to your algebra one. If there's no x value to replace then it just stays as the same thing. So the limit of a constant is just gonna be the constant. There's no x that's changing. Okay, part h, uh, there was a little typo. Uh, that should be a nine pi. That's what x is approaching. So let's plug in the nine pi over two. So using your unit circle knowledge, uh, sine of nine pi over two is one, and then the square root of one is one. All right, so we just did eight problems in like two minutes, so not too bad. Okay, so let's look at the properties of these limits. So uh, the limit as x approaches c of f is l, and then of the function g, it's gonna equal k. So number one, we just talked about here. The limit of a constant is the constant. And the rest of them, they're kinda, they're usually just sort of common sense type stuff. Um, it's like number two and number three, it's just like, okay, yeah, I just plugged in the C value, that's all they've done. For four, um, if, if your function's been multiplied by a constant, then the limit value gets multiplied by the same constant. If you're adding and subtracting, uh, multiplying, or dividing, 
two functions and you know each of their limit values, then the operation is going to get carried over. Um, so, I mean, these properties are pretty kind of straightforward. So you can go ahead and take a look at these uh, more in the notes. Uh, right now, we're going to look at some other examples. So sometimes you can't plug in the actual value because it would give you something that was undefined uh, or negative in roots or something that you can't actually calculate. So in these cases, you have to kind of manipulate the function before you can just start plugging stuff in. So like for example, A, you can't plug in the two, that would give you a zero over zero, which is bad. So instead, let's do some algebra with it. So we're keeping our limit notation there because we haven't taken the limit, you're just doing algebra with the function. So a lot of times it's gonna be factoring and any factoring technique is fair game. Difference of squares, uh, difference of cubes, grouping, um, any factoring style is, is expected to be um, mastered by the time you get to calculus. Okay, so we factored this down, you can reduce it. And you're just now doing the limit of x plus two as x approaches two. Well, now you can plug in the value. And once you plug that value in, then your limit notation goes away. So your limits is gonna equal four. So I'm gonna stop the video here and then we'll pick up in the next one.